Welcome back to Praise the Lord. We have a wonderful guest for you right now, Apostle Dr. John King Hill, who we've come to know through his book, Understanding the Presence Manifested in the Anointing. <laughs> this is exciting. And Dr. Hill comes to us from Jamaica, New York, mm -hmm. where he heads up the World Harvesters Outreach Ministries Conferences and Crusades Organization. Yes. <laughs> and you also come to us from across the world also. That's right. You come from Nigeria. That's right. That's right. So, welcome to the greater central Ohio region and, the, and through this magnificent expression of TBN, Amen. you're going to touch lives and teach people about the anointing. Oh, thank you so very much. Dr. Hill, before we start, I was praying for a scripture. Okay. And this is what I felt like God spoke. And it's from Isaiah 41, and it's verse 9. I took you from the ends of the earth, from the farthest corners I called you. Hmm. I said, you're my servant. I've chosen you and have not rejected you, so don't fear. I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. I'm your God. I'll strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. That's Amen. a beautiful word. Amen. Wonderful. It's not a word. Dr. Hill, we welcome you. What Thank a, you. What a privilege yes, to have you, you in Columbus, Ohio. Thanks. You have been all over TBN. Yes. And God is just, this is your season to Amen. express what he's taught you and to bring the glory. Yes. Give us some background. Help us, help our viewing uh, audience to know you, your, your beginnings, and how God uses you. You see, the thing is that... Um, you know, all of us, none of us was born into this. That's right. That's true. Uh, it's something that only God could make it work that way. That's right. But I'm quite excited about it uh, because of the way that God, the, uh, the way that God do things. Uh, he's unique in his ways. Yes, he is. And uh, he make us unique uh, so that we'll reflect who he is. Uh, I would say that um, when it started in 1986, okay. uh, very young, I'm not old yet, but yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember a friend coming to me with the message of the gospel. Uh, this is someone that in the neighborhood, he's not a guy that you want to hear the gospel from. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's a troublemaker. We, we know that. Yes. He could not stay one day without fighting. Okay. And he would do all kind of stuff. And um, he came to me and talked with me about Jesus. I looked at him as if he don't have the right to even talk to me about Jesus. Yes. But he spoke to me with the power of God that was intense. Mm. I tried to fight him to shut him down. He just didn't work. And I cried. I said, please pray for me. And he did. From that day, after six months, I mean, I see devils you know, being you know, cast out. Mm -hmm. I see people getting healed. Right. I see deaf ears open. Right away? Six months after. Six wow. months after. I started speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. oh, glory. But um, at the end of it, I still didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. Mm. Even though you were speaking in tongues? Yeah. It sounds crazy. <laughs> but it is true. I remember 1997. You see, the gift, the gift and the calling of God mm -hmm. is without repentance. That's right. That's right. But after you repent, then you can begin a process. The gift is activated. Okay. Yes. And it will start working. Okay. But it doesn't mean that you are anointed as yet. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to separate that gift from the anointing. Okay. Okay. So I was seeing things happen, but if you would sit down and ask me, who is the Holy Spirit, I don't know. So the gift was operating. Yes. But, okay. but I, at the point, I came to a point where I needed more than just what is happening. That's where my hunger started. Mm -hmm. In 1997, at was, I was at in New York City. And I had been to almost every church that I knew of. I, I just couldn't find what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for what the Bible said. Yes. Don't tell me the stories of the Bible. Right. Demonstration. Mm -hmm. Please. Power, power and demonstration. I need the power of God to come in there. If God is who he said that he That's is. That's right. And a sister came to me, a prophet, and said to me, you got to come to this service. I said, woman, don't aggravate my soul. Because I do not have one minute to come and waste with religion. Right. Mm. I'm done with it. Okay. I'll stay home. She said, you got to be in this service. I didn't go that day. The next day she came back. She said, if you would be at this service, 
something is going to happen in your life. I said, okay, let's go, finally. When we get to the service, Pastor Benny came out. Oh, it's oh Pastor Benny. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's my spiritual father. Ah, yes. Pastor Benny came out, and the atmosphere was intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said within my heart, yes. brother, I said, this is what I'm looking for. Yes. But how do I get it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before the service was over, uh, Pastor Benny spoke a word. He said, I'm going to be anointing people with oil this evening and praying for them. I took it that if he is going to anoint me, anoint people with oil, and I happen to be one of them, I'm going to be anointed. Yes. And so right I'm going to take that anointing and I'm going to run off. Oh my. Well, you <laughs> okay. So the anointing and the gift will come together. So that they will come together <coughs> and things will start happening right. the way that it's supposed to happen. Well, I, we didn't go home for, for the whole day. We stayed in the city all day. Okay. In the evening, we had to fight to get in because the crowd get oh. yeah. much more now. Yeah. Yes. And finally, we got inside here, and I can't wait for that time that he's going to take the oil and start anointing us because I want to be anointed. Right. Mm. <laughs> when you get to that time, uh, people started coming from the top, from the bottom, everywhere you are, you are coming in, and Pastor Benny was laying hands on the people and praying with them, uh, with his team. That's where I'm standing right over there. Maybe three people in front of me to get to Pastor Benny. The next thing, Pastor Benny withdrew himself oh. and left the stage. <laughs> I almost <laughs> fell down on the floor and cried out. My heart went, <laughs> no, the anointing is gone. I need it. Yes. I right. said, okay, maybe I just have to you know, hold the courage. Uh, and maybe when I get there, he would come back again and uh, lay hands on me. He never came back. Mm. I came to his team looking at them like, when they touched me, I was mad. Oh. I was so disappointed that I forget about the friends that I came with. Don't talk with me. I don't want to talk with you. You should have left me home. Mm. So Benny's team anointed you rather than Benny They himself? anointed me. I mean, uh, he was a, right. a, I didn't care about right, the anointing right. anymore. I'm I mean, he's done, gone. He's thrown mm. out the window. So I'm saying to myself, this is a golden opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Who knows when next? Right. That's right. right. Yeah. I said, okay, maybe I would devise a means to get this anointing. Go around and come back on the same line. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to find out that I've been, I was here before. That's right. <laughs> so I, I left that service. I, could, I hardly spoke a word. All my friends were also disappointed, but I didn't know. Oh. We were not talking to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. We get on the train in the middle of the night, 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. And everybody's sitting quiet. You look at each other, it's like, <clears throat> nobody said anything. Mm. And the sister spoke a word and said, oh, they even anointed me without no oil. Well, all of us, we open up our mouth and start complaining how, okay. you know, things went out of hand. Yeah. I remember getting home that night. We I, didn't I, get it. Yeah. I, when I lay on the bed that night, I shut off the light, but the light was still on. Oh. I couldn't mm. sleep. Mm. I'm twisting, I'm turning all through the night. Around 5 o'clock in the morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, do you remember that Pastor Benny spoke about good morning, Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yes. I said, yeah. I get up so early that I went to the bookstore. And the bookstore was not open yet. I right. parked outside, waiting for them to open up. When they open up, I ran in there. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? I said, I need the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Pastor Benny Hinn. They said, oh, we have all his books. He got more books than that. I bought all the books that Pastor Benny wrote, about seven of them. So oh. hungry. Oh, yes. So desperate. When I get home, I brought out a, a dictionary and a Bible, and I took out the book. If the word in the book said A, I want to know what that word A means. Okay. I chewed that book like bread. Towards evening, I realized that the Holy Spirit is a person. Mm -hmm. and you could actually interact yes. with him on a personal yes. level. Yes. Yes. I said, just as I'm sitting here, there was a center table right before me. I said, TV is standing across from me. And I said, let me close the book, and I want the Holy Spirit to come and pray with me. Okay. And I said, Holy Spirit, please, could you come and pray with me? I get banged up, knocked out of my chair. I almost break the center table in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, find, I found every excuse that I could give that that's why I fell. Oh. I mean, f people fall under the Spirit about to be sitting down and get rocked. That, way, that was intense. Right. I stood up from where I was sitting. I said, let me get to the TV. And I went to the TV and I held the TV with my two hands. And I spread my leg because... I'm not going to fall down no more. All right. That's it. Yeah. 
Even if the whole heaven fall down on earth, it's not going, I'm not going down. Mm. And I said, the Holy Spirit, I'm ready. I get blasted from the TV. Mm. I almost fell outside on the street because I had the door open. <laughs> mm. And I said, maybe there's something strange. Are you sure that Pastor Benny is okay? <laughs> maybe he's into some crazy stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And folk just don't know about it. I got up and I went into the bathroom. This is the toilet bowl. And I made sure that I pressed myself against the toilet bowl because this is the final. No. <laughs> this is the turb. And I said, Holy Spirit, could you come? Please, let's pray. I get thrown off from the toilet uh, 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 bowl and I fell inside the tub. It was so difficult that I couldn't just get up. Mm. I fought real hard to get up. I couldn't get up. Mm -mm. When I came out there, I stayed quiet. I closed the book. I said, maybe I'm done with this. Mm. I think maybe I got the anointing. Uh -huh. But it's so fast. Are you sure? Because yeah. I want to make sure that I have it. Mm. I don't want to go out there and say I have it and I don't have it. That's right, yes. And after a while, I said, maybe I need more. From that day, the fire of God lit up in my body. Mm. It started burning so intense that it get to a point where in the summer to put on this cloth will be difficult. Mm -hmm. My hands would appeal, and you could see what I come out of it. Like Jeremiah saying, it feels like fire shut up shut in up my yes. bones. bones. That yeah. fire is so real. Yes. And it can be intensified. Mm. Mm. Because as you move from the anointing into the glory realm, the fire doesn't refine you anymore. With the anointing, the fire could only refine you. Okay. Yes. But when you get into the glory, you get consumed. Ah. Because God ah. is here. The Shekinah. God Almighty. Mm. Glory. It gets so intense that you walk right inside it. Mm. And you disappear inside it. Mm. Wow. That's what happened to uh, the three Hebrew boys. Yes. I was just thinking furnace. that the fiery furnace. Yes. The fire has to be heated seven times. Hot. Seven means completion and perfection. In other words, the fire is supposed to cremate them if they get thrown in there. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed up inside the fire. Yes, he oh. did. So they entered inside it. Mm. With the anointing, what we are dealing with is that the spirit enter inside of us. Yes. And we carry God around. Yes. But the God is your person. You don't carry God around. Mm. Because the anointing is an integration process. All right. Integration means that we got this glass here. A different component. <clears throat> we got the water from a different source, so we integrated both. Yes. So from here you can drink, but the water is still the water, and the cup is still the cup. Ah, yes. So the baptism that we call about the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit come inside of you, yes, mm -hmm. that's an introduction to connect you to the source of the power. All right. So that's the filling, the pouring in. That's the indwelling part. The indwelling okay. part. From the indwelling, we're gonna run it through to get us to the place where we become filled. Right. That's the infilling process. Mm -hmm. You begin to say, I have the Holy Spirit, but where is the power? Ah. Okay. I want the power. So we have the indwelling and the infilling. Infilling, and then when you are full and your inside can't take any more, is the what mm -hmm. you could, your inside couldn't take any more, yeah. it's gonna go out in the overflow. <laughs> yes. That's the outward overflow process. Okay. Ah. So by completing those three levels, is, that's why I called it the three uh, levels of the outpouring of the Spirit. Mm. That is contingent to the release of the power. Yes. You are taking it from the spirit source and you are integrating it into your system until you bring it out to the physical. Mm. Mm. John 20, verse 22. And Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Connect them to the source of the power so that if they begin to pray now, the spirit will open up each life and pour out a measure mm. into their lives to channel the power to walk through their systems. And out of your belly will flow, flow rivers. Out. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Mm -mm. So when you are full and it overflows, you are ready to release the power. That's why Acts chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 8, it says, Ye shall receive power. It didn't say, Ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. Because you already have the Spirit. What they need is the power. The power. And Jesus said, This is how you're going to get it. You're going to get it as the Spirit fills you up and comes up on you. Then you can release it. But this is the basic anointing. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So that basic anointing in you met up with that gift in you. Yes, and it became a trigger. Mm. Okay. But I thought that when the anointing came, well, I'm done. I'm ready. Really? And I realized that the anointing is even elementary, walking with God. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to use that language. Go oh. on. Elementary means that 
Any time that God has to sit down and teach you A, B, C, D before you can get things done, you are wasting God time. Mm -hmm. God does not, you know, take us in school. You have to experience him as a person. So we're going to go from his manifested presence into the revelation of his person. Mm. Okay. Now, now we're talking anointing glory. The glory. The glory. You got to go from that anointing. You see, with the anointing, you are feeling him. Because the spirit is interjected into your system, is integrated into your system. That's why you are feeling him a lot. And you think that you got so much power and you're gonna move the world. That's why the anointing is technical and is methodical. Yes. You got to really know how it, much you really have. But it's limited, isn't it? Thank you. You've That's got what to I'm want about. it. You've got to need it. It comes by levels and measures. The level of the outpouring of the spirit is equal to the measure of the power that you're gonna get. Okay. Which means it's important that you check your life. Ask God, I know I feel the sensation. I want to fall down on the ground. But don't judge it based upon the feeling. Look at it by what you really have. Okay. Because the only success that you can have with the anointing is dependent upon the level and the measure that you have. Such as I have. Give I unto you. Amen. If you look at Second uh, King chapter 4, verse 2 okay. and verse 3. The widow of the prophet mm. had went to Elisha and said, listen, they're about to take my children away. Mm -hmm. And that was the system in those days, the rule. Right. Yeah. Those children have to go into captivity to pay the debt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the woman cried to the uh, man of God and said, I need help. It's like going to church to get help from the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today is a different thing. You see that the body don't just have what it takes to address the issues of the church. Mm. That's why you, you, the people are languishing in the church, right. but they're supposed to get help there. That's right. The lady knew that she had to get to the church, meet with the man of God, and project the problem. And Elisha, being experienced with the anointing, told okay. her, tell me something, what do you have? What's available? What? You see, every one of us have something, but do we know how to bring it to a place where it walk in the fullness? Mm -hmm. And, and the man of God guided her. The lady said, I have a pot of oil. The oil represented the anointing. Okay. It got to rub off. Mm. With the anointing, you have to be able to touch it, or the anointing has to touch you. If not, you will die with your problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way it is received is the way that is applied. You got to come in contact with it. But when the glory comes, you don't need no contact. Mm. Because God is almighty, so he is doing all things by himself. And he don't need no help. That's it's why you have to be still and know that and he's no, God Almighty. No. You don't know him yet. And it's his complete presence oh, God, and God. his oh. ministry. So the widow woman had a piece of cake it and the oil him. and said, this is for my son and I, and then we will die. This is all we have left. Yes, brother. You see, the thing is that that woman was saying the truth. Yes. We have to be serious about what oh, we're yes. dealing with. Yes. The woman knew that, listen, so few people have died. Yes. That's where he came with the idea. I'm next. Yes. And if the issue is not addressed, I'm out of here. But watch. God sent a man that is already on the brink of death. Mm. Mm -hmm. Elijah is the type of Christ. Ah. You see, when he cried to Jezebel and said, uh, to God and said, take my life away because they're after me to kill me, mm -hmm. he received a credible threat. Yes. It was credible. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The woman that she was dealing with is not... Oh, yeah. no, local woman. She was a no, no, force. She was, uh, okay? a she was spiritually yeah. powerful. Yeah. Right. And she was physically <laughs> equipped. So yeah. she can get this thing done. Yes. And Elijah knew it. Mm. So he said, God, the only way I'm going to make it, if I Help run me. to the next nation, they will extradite me. Mm. Mm. They're going to catch up with me and they're going to cut my head up. Take me out of this world. Take me into the glory uh -huh. so that she can come in there. The, en the enemy cannot pursue you into the glory realm. No, he can't. Why would he? And even the anointing <coughs> repels the enemy. It repels. Yes. It repels but it. it's a quagmire. Yes. It's a guerrilla warfare. Yes. I punch you on the face, you knock me on the kneecap, and before we know it, all of us are bleeding. <laughs> yes. yes. That's why Jesus was wounded. Mm, for our transgressions. He was wounded. He was bruised. Mm. Until at the point he was dead. You see, the anointing don't have the weight to carry the pressure of the end time. It's going to take the glory of God to make it work. Yes. Yeah. So, how do we go from 
anointing to glory. You see, we stopped at the basic. If you look at Matthew chapter 10, okay. Luke chapter 10, uh, Numbers chapter 11, the seventh year, the Lord took a transfer or what we call a partition of the anointing from the seventh year and gave it to the elders. Mm -hmm. That's an impartation. When you have an impartation of the anointing, it doesn't mean that you're anointed. Okay. Speak to our viewers so the with that. So were able to go out <laughs> and lay hands what on the What you are doing sick. with the impartation is that you are helping me. Ah. But for you to embark upon your ministry, ministerial calling, you can't do it. On your anointing. On your with the transfer right. and impartation. Yeah. Right. Until God himself has anointed you because it's mm. a different plan. God is not trying to raise you up to be me. Uh -huh. The church does not teach that. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth. Luke 10, Matthew 10, you see the 70, and you see the 12. Jesus, with the anointing of his own life, released the impartation to them and sent them where? Specifically to where he himself mm -hmm. supposed to go. Mm. And he gave them direction. He said to them, remain within the confine or the jurisdictional boundary mm -hmm. of the lordship of the household of Israel. We know that Samaria is down the block, but don't cross over there. If yeah. you cross over there, you're going to pay out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So he put boundaries around that. The levels and measures of the anointing creates a territorial jurisdiction or boundaries. If you cross it over, the enemy know that you're outside your jurisdiction. Wow. Ah. Levels of authority and power are applied, works perfectly according to jurisdictional limits. Mm -hmm. Only the glory gives you dominion because it's overtaking everything. He gives you the spirit realm and the physical realm. Unify it as one in a moment of time. Wow. In a Truly moment. the authority of a believer. <clears throat> yes, that's why Jesus gets excited. Ah. Matthew 28, verse 18. After he died and he resurrected, remember he told them, don't go across to Samaria. Mm -hmm. But in Matthew 28, 18, he turned around and said, go into the world. Why? All authority, all power is given to me in me. heaven and in the earth. earth. So there's no more limit. The glory is what makes it possible mm -hmm. for you to go anywhere in the whole face of the earth and execute, walk the same way as if you're here mm -hmm. without incurring retaliation or retribution. Really? You so see, what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Yeah, it's the glory that gives That's you the capacity glory. to invoke yeah. the authority and power of heaven. Mm -hmm. Seated with him in yes. heavenly places. You know, the reason is because with the anointing, mm -hmm. God is releasing measures and levels of his authority and power. That authority is in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. The power is with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But when you step into the glory realm, God will pull every single thing away from you, and you have nothing. In the glory, you don't have one cent of God's power on your life. Mm -mm -mm. Why? Because God Almighty is ruling it's supreme it's with heaven. all it's authority and heaven. all power. And that is why the glory overshadows you. Mm. It does not come upon you. Oh, my God. It swallows you up. Mm. Mm. And it's completely God. Yes. Oh my. The anointing can only change you piece by piece and part by part. But mm. the glory transforms you and creates you brand new. So with the anointing, you are focusing on the will of God. A will is something that someone that was dying left unaccomplished. Ah, yes. That's why he wrote it down. Yeah, and it's it. trusted into the hands of the legal experts. The Holy Spirit is advocate of the church. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Hill, what we are all craving is the glory of yes. God. Yes. Really? But the because presence. we mistake the anointing for the glory, we're in chaos. Mm. Mm -hmm. You cannot challenge dominion with levels and measures of authority and power. You will commit a suicide. Yes, it's not. How do we create an atmosphere? You don't create it. How do you we see? invite his glory? Yes. The thing is that the anointing is a ladder. Okay. Ah. The anointing creates a ladder for you to climb. Okay. All right. The each level or measure of the anointing that is released is a, is a level. Okay. It's, a, it's a ladder. So that's why Jacob had a vision. Yes. Ascending and descending. Yes. Mm -hmm. You gotta go through the ladder. When you get to the gate of heaven, then it will open up and then the glory will pull you in. Mm -hmm. How do you accomplish it? Remember, we talked about a, the basic anointing. Let's run it quickly because I don't know what time we have. We, we have a short time and, and we need to move to the place where we can bring our viewers into the place of receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit so they can begin their rungs of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. We need to equip the church. This is what it's all about. Yes. yes. This is what it is. This is what I've been doing.
to show the church how to go quickly. Yes. With the glory, a job that will take 1,000 years will take one day. Ah, yes. Because in God, there is no time. There's no time frame. The guy, he has defeated season. He has defeated time. So right now, he's operating in moments. So with the anointing, you have to pay attention with season and time. Mm. There is season when the spirit begins to move, mm. and you are feeling the presence. Yes. He's telling you, listen, you're going to start from here, this time here to over here, this is a period. Yes. But after this season here, the time that the power is supposed to hit is locked away. Mm. You're done. you got to wait for another season and another time. But the glory is gives you moment. You have to operate in moment. Mm. In other words, God can meet you anywhere because He's everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, He can appear to you anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. And your blessings don't come from one specific source. The elements get involved. The elements. Get the creation. Involved. All of creation. They are the executors of the order of God's judgment. Yes. Speak mm. more about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see. The Bible uses an instance in uh, Psalms 19, verse 1. Right. The heavens declare the, the, the glory. You know what it is about? Yes. The creation of God. All of them are waiting patiently, silently, mm. waiting for God to appear. If God shows up, all of them get excited. Mm. If God say one word, mm. all of them will rise up to accomplish it if God tap mm. them to do it. Yeah. If you bring your own voice, they're not going to listen to you. That's why Joshua was able to stop the sun. When he elevated in that realm and entered the glory realm, he was able to say to the son, listen, you can't waste my time. I'm going to finish this thing. Stay still. Apostle Stand time. still. It's time to pray for our audience. Oh, Lord God Almighty, brother. Lead them into the baptism <laughs> yes. so they can experience <laughs> baptism, the baptism. The beginning. Let's do this. Yes. Please, let's stretch our hands. Oh, glory. Father, we come to you at this moment. Your people have... There's a lot of them that are so hungry and yes. so thirsty yes. for you today. Yes. They, they have come to the end of the rope. They are saying, what else? And you don't want them to die with religious opium for this hour. You want them to be empowered from heaven. God, you want to reveal yourself to them where it is no longer about feeling, about sensation, but experiencing yes. you as a person. Jesus. We pray for them today that your power that is sweeping across this uh, yes, this right channel, on. these yes. airwaves, Lord God, will hit them yes. right where they are, mm. and God, that they will be gripped. Yes. That their life will be ripped wide open, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. They will find themselves, Lord God Almighty, frequenting that prayer closet and calling you and telling you that this is what they need. They will open their mouths. They will open their lives. They will open everything, Lord, and they empty everything. They will be willing to pay any price to walk in this place at this hour. Mm. In the name of your Jesus, the Holy Spirit that they have received, Thank that you, is Jesus. inside of them, that there will be an eruption from their systems, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 A desperate Praise desire God. for him. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Praise the Lord from Columbus, Ohio. And I'm Bill Griffin, and my wife Sandy are your co-hosts here. We're from the Christian Counseling Center in Pickerington, Ohio. And our prayer is that you'll continue to watch as we feel this anointing coming from our guest today. We're talking to Dr. John King Hill, and he's been sharing about the anointing and the glory of God. So stay tuned for what we have that's going to be a gift to you. This has been such a powerful segment. And we just want to thank you for being our guest. It's, it's, you are blessing us so much. Thanks. I had a question about the glory. And mm -hmm. this was the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17. And he said, Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that, you, bef that I had with you mm -hmm. before the world began. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. What was he speaking about? You see, if we, let's go back to Luke chapter 1, okay. uh, verse 35. You will see what is happening. Uh, the angel had appeared to uh, Mary mm -hmm. and uh, told him that um, he, she was going to conceive a child, which was a sign that God gave to Israel right. that we are anticipating mm -hmm. or expecting the Messiah. The Messiah. And, but we have to see how what the anointing is all about. The anointing is all about preservation 
of what is in the earth realm. We gotta preserve this cup, and then we have to enable this cup to you know to function mm -hmm. uh, according to the will of God. Okay. And that's why Jesus took the form. God took the form of a man. Right. Yes. But remember that the Bible said that God is not a man. Right. That's right. If we look at John uh, verse four, verse twenty-four. He says that God is a spirit being, mm -hmm. a different species right. from the human kind uh, of flesh and blood. So how do we go from uh, spirit uh, to a human and back again to spirit? Yes. That's why he took a certain walk. Mm -hmm. Jesus was created inside the womb of Mary. He was carried in there by the spirit. Right. As the son of God. Then, he was born as a son of man. Mm -hmm. That's where the anointing comes into play. Okay. Okay. The spirit entered him as a son of man. Fill him up and come upon him as the Christ. He was anointed as Christ, the Messiah. Right. Okay. But after he finished all this work, uh, we eat in the anointing platform. He has to enter back into his glory. The anointing is the life of God that you receive inside of you. Right. But the glory is the life of God that you enter inside of. Amen. No. Amen. So when he was over with, he talked to the father. He said, guess what? Oh, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Bring me back to where I was to show you that you just don't get up and enter into the glory by yourself. Mm -hmm. God has to bring you in. Psalm 100 verse 4. What a powerful statement. <laughs> it's God who has to God. bring you in. Yeah, you, you don't go into the glory. The Bible said, for thine is the what? Kingdom. kingdom the kingdom and the power and the, power and the, and the glory until when? Yes. Forever. Forever. And we say Forever. what we sign off on it and say, amen. So let it be that amen. way. Amen. Yeah. In other words, the word of God is forever settled. That's right. Mm. In heaven. You're not going to change that thing. Because the eternity, heaven is all about establishing eternal life, eternal order, eternal you know, rulership of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's God himself. Right, his kingdom and power. Okay, so the only way that you are going to get back inside here is for God to bring you back. That's why Jesus said, prayed and said, Father, glorify thy me with the glory that I had with you. It revealed that Jesus was in heaven before he came before, to the right. earth. Mm -hmm. He has been. When he appeared to John the Revelator, I love that scripture, <laughs> John, the, the Revelation chapter 1. He was telling John, I know that you are seeing the way that I look right now. I'm completely different. Oh, Lord. Go on. But it's still me. Yes. I am him that was and is, is and, and is, is to come. come. You remember when we were, I was on, with you in that side. Mm. And when John said, the Bible said, he turned. Mm. Oh, Lord God. Mm. Mm. He turned to look to see who was talking with him. Yes. And that's the Lord himself, mm. God. Mm. And John said, the power was too great, too intense. He fell out. And he picked him up by the hand and said, get up. It's me. Just write these things that I want to tell you. Mm. This is quite different from the way that the anointing operates. With the anointing, you are feeling the presence. You are sensing it, and you have to interpret it and be able to convey the message and be able to do what God. But with the glory, you don't sense and feel. You see and hear God. Mm. That's why there's unusual transparency in the glory. There's nothing that is hidden that shall not be revealed. It's all about exposition. So Jesus was completely in, in his pre-earth form. Yes. He was he restored said, to, to his prayer was answered. You see, because of the time that we have, I want to cue in the four different unusual power of God that walk in the glory realm. Okay. One is the power of creation. Genesis chapter one, whatever is not there because God Almighty has all power to do all things, all authority. He can create what is not there. Okay. Out of nothing. Right. Out of nothing. By the spoken word. Number two is the power of resurrection. When you see elements that are in the glory laying dormant, don't mistake them for dead. They are sleeping. <laughs> and when the power of God begins to move on them and carry them, they will become atomic weapons. <laughs> you can stop them. 
Number three is the power of ascension. You are seeing me sitting here, but before you know it, I'm gone. That's why no matter where you are, God will meet, reach you there and meet you there. David said, even if I hide myself in Sheol. at the bottom of the sea, it don't mean any different. You are right there. You're there. And the number four power is the power of revelation. Whatever is created, if we don't reveal it and bring it to the open for you to see it, you don't know that it's happening. Mm -hmm. And yet they are right there. God is everywhere at the same time. And yet you don't see him walking down the street. But he can pop up out of the nowhere, and you see him, and then he disappears. That's why people build a memorial. And when he's gone, they're looking at the sky. Which way did he just went? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> That's what transforms your life. But when he reveals himself. When he pop out like that, it will take your whole life and just wreck it for good. Do it's a lasting memory. <laughs> Dr. John, we are moving into such a change in the yes. church please speak in our last few minutes yeah, yes just a couple of you see to share where the church is let, let me show you a vision quickly that the lord had showed me okay the lord had appeared to me one morning and he told me come and he, he took me to uh, this body of water it looked like an ocean or a sea and when i looked around there was this a, a small house that looked like a mobile house. Okay. And he picked up speed and started moving in such a speed that he was able to go in between a small uh, uh, space of a, an open window. And I looked at him, I picked up speed and followed him. We were going in such a, a powerful speed that there's no way that we can be held up. Hmm. Someone out of nowhere fired something that looked like a dart. He shot it out. And it touched me on the wrist. Mm. And the Lord stopped abruptly and looked at me and looked at me and looked at me and he disappeared. Mm. In my spirit, I knew what it is. What, what? I need more speed. Ah. What does that mean? It means that I need more speed. What is that mean? If you are going in unusual speed, even if someone have a sniper rifle, they cannot be able to shoot you. Great. Faster than speeding. The, the glory is all about speed the and glory. pace. Mm. Glory. And we are entering You see, into. God is moving beyond the speed of light. Okay. God is moving beyond the speed of sound. Mm. God is moving beyond the speed of thought. That's why the camera cannot catch him. That's why in the glory, you are carried inside the spirit realm, and your body goes through a whole transformation to fit in that place. And you're able to watch everything that is do going on like you are watching a camera. So when you come back in this life, it takes you days to recover. Oh, my goodness. But you're no longer Praise God. the same. You are not the same. You are oh, the same. You, you never, 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 ever, never, never, the ever be never. the same. And you're never. changed. One encounter with the person of God will transform your life beyond one million times of receiving the levels and measures of the anointing in your life. Mm, 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 mm. Praise God. What a blessing you've been to us today. My goodness, my goodness. I brought our guests back together for a final wrap-up. We're going to have a chance to pray with you, our viewing audience, and, and we expect some impartation. Amen. Absolutely. All I could summarize this program is this has been intense. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> intense emotionally, spiritually. Debbie, you shared when you were listening to Dr. Hill, what went off inside of you? When you heard what he said about when you encountered God, you'll never be the same. Yes. That's me. What he said, I lived. I encountered God. I'm Debbie, not the same. For those who do not know the Lord, who are lost in that place of darkness, in that place of pain, in that place of shame, lead them to, in a prayer of salvation. I need you to know there's still hope. What he said, let it speak to you right now. Father, for every person yes. that is out there Jesus. that feel they're not worthy mm. of a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is real. He is a person. He is real, and he wants so much to meet you right where you are. I pray right now with you. It's real simple. 
Just say, Jesus. Jesus. But Jesus. I need you. I need, I need you. you. I, I can't do this. I can't do this. But you can do this. But you can do this. Give it all to him. It's not yours to carry. Not no more. The Holy Spirit will carry you through this. Amen. He will guide you and he will lead you and he will teach you. Mm. Take a chance. You've tried everything else. Oh my. Give it to God. Thank you, Lord. Give it to God. And ask him to come into your heart as you gaze on his crucified yes. body for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Praise God. Pastor Dr. Hill, for the days ahead, would you speak a word to the church? Yes, to the church. The, the church, for all of you that are out there, uh, you know what time that we are facing in this life. Yes. It's, you know it's not getting better. No matter who tells you that it's getting better, you know the whole world is in, uh, is in fire, it's in flame. But the God Almighty is doing something for the body, getting the body ready for that time that he's going to show up in a different way. Yeah. Uh, bef it, before Jesus came, John the Baptist was sent. Before his glory will come on earth, he will also get the church to, mm. you know, to go forward. Mm. So you have to know that Jesus is not coming for an anointed church. He's coming for a glorified oh, church. Yes. 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 But the anointing takes you into the glory yes. realm. So I pray at this moment that you will drop that God will move you to drop everything yes. that you are doing today that yes. you are focusing on, chasing up and down, thinking that, okay, if I solve this one problem, then it's going to be, there will be more problems in the world. So you better be ready. So I pray that God will move you to start looking for him. It's an emergency. This is an emergency now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. yes, yes. It is an emergency. It is. It is. I'd like to thank all you viewers for joining us today and a special thanks to Dr. Paul and Jan Crouch for making it possible for us Amen. to be touching their lives yes. in this very special way. Yeah. And, and we what we're going to do is we're going to do the traditional closing on Praise the Lord, and that's where we join our hands together. Amen. And we say, let, let everything, everything that, that has breath, breath praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord.